or an Amazon. I can't remember the last time I've ordered on Amazon. I don't know. I, I probably will. I'll never say never. But, I mean, it's just Amazon this, Amazon that. I'm like, hey, eBay has always worked good for me. This camera I'm using, I got a great deal. I paid about a fourth of what the camera I'm, I'm doing this video through uh, was worth to me. I mean, that's what I had paid for a previous one. I dropped it on the floor. It ended up breaking, long story. You know, I sent it in for repairs, and it never got done. It was a big old thing, so... You know, I feel really lucky. It's the exact model I wanted. And it happened to me with a computer, a laptop recently. It's like, wow, man, that was lucky. And when the laptop arrived, you wouldn't believe the box it was in. The box was literally falling apart. There was a little piece of bubble wrap in there. The laptop was totally loose. But the United States Postal Service had delivered it. And it was, it's like freaking new, man. I'm like, wow, exact model, everything worked in there. And it's like, man, this is great. So I've lucked out. But I've also, I don't like to order car parts on eBay. Go to your local retail as much as possible. Unless you're absolutely certain what you're getting is what you're ordering. Okay, because it's just too hard to return crap. I hate having to send stuff back. And I absolutely hate it. I mean, some people don't mind repackaging crap and labeling it and the hassle of going to the post office, waiting in line or wherever you send it out. It, what a drag, man. I don't care how you do it. Maybe you put it out for pickup. You know, it's still all a pain in the butt. So I recommend car parts uh, at your local uh, retailer. All right, back to the gist of this. So get yourself some good uh, high-quality capsules. I ordered a 30 of them were like... 20 bucks with tax free shipping but it was like only 30 capsules so you got to use these things sparingly but just one capsule you don't want to wash it out with too much food maybe a little bit something healthy and then uh, you know you eat one of these things or two and uh, you know try it if it doesn't happen immediately be persistent and then couple that with doing some apple cider vinegar the kind I described I'm telling you friends you know, I had a really, I don't want to be blunt with too much information, but I had a great bowel movement this morning. And I feel good, and I want to share it, and I want to help anybody I can. My dad was always like that, always willing to share information. Well, how did you defy the professional opinion of the doctors that told you you'd be dead in five years? And, well, here, you, you know, that's what I did. I'm surprised he never wrote a nutrition book, but he read them all, and he could recommend any of them. And he, he'd do a blender drink. I mean, he could have easily wrote, written a book on this. But he threw everything in that thing. I can't even start describing. There was just too many ingredients he put in. In fact, I, I talked to him once. I thought, Dad, you know, maybe you're getting too many vitamins. I mean, there is a thing called vitamin do toxicity. Because he got on a big, giant vitamin C kick. Almost like a, you know, a, a mega flush of vitamin C. Because he had gotten, you know, cancer diagnosis in his in mid 80s, and you know, so he was really concerned about getting rid of that. And but I think he was getting a little too much. I know I'm not nearly as fanatical as he was about it. I, um, you know, I could go weeks, months, sometimes without taking a vitamin. But I know to be complex. At my age, I like to have a vitamin E once in a while. I recommend cod liver oil, right? You got the natural source of vitamin A and D. And don't confuse that with fish liver oil. My dad probably saved my life giving me cod liver oil when I was 10 years old living in, with, in Ireland when I contracted pneumonia. He made me take that, coupled with B-complex. He might have given me some vitamin C. Okay, but I'm just telling you, there's virtue, okay, there's efficacy to supplements and diet, nutrition. Your body is much like a machine. So when you think about that and you, how you watch the oil and the gas you put in your car and the quality of the car parts and the service of the technicians, you care so much about your car and baby and it. But when we think about our body, <laughs> and that's coming from a guy that's done plenty of abuse to his body. Don't, you know, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. You know, I, I don't always practice what I preach, but I know a lot of stuff and I'll share it. It doesn't mean I'm a hypocrite necessarily. It just means that, hey, you're strong in this area. I'm strong in this area. You're weak in this area. I'm weak in this area. And 
you know, but if we work together here and we live like, try to live like a family, I'm your brother. I'm everybody's brother. Think of me as, a, as your brother or a son. That suits me well, too. And I'll think of you as either a brother or a sister or a son, a daughter, and we'll live like a family. Please our owner, God Almighty, and we'll find happiness. But until we do that and we look after the least of men, my friends, we're not. We're going to be sucking lemons. I'm telling you, I want to enjoy my life. And honest to God, I'm not virtue signaling. I, I can't. For the life of me, I can't. I would like to be prosperous. Yes, I'll be frank with you. I like the idea of being rich. Who doesn't? Come on. What fool? What idiot? What liar? And they don't love money. Why? I mean, for obvious reasons, right? So God knows. He knows all this stuff. Let's all be honest with God. And let's lay our riches on the table. Collectively, could you imagine what's out there, the resources that are out there for the downtrodden? My God, we as a society, my friends, are spending 100000 a year to keep one inmate in jail for one year. Criminals, the weak links, who were facing financial difficulty, financial desperation. And they snapped and they did something foolish and criminal. And maybe in the back of their minds, they said, screw it, man, I'm throwing in the towel. I don't care. At least if I'm in jail, I'd be looked after. I know I can get three hots and a cot. I don't have mom to cook my meals anymore, but, uh, you know, the prison uh, cooks will take care of me. And, you know, I, I know there's showers and I know there's a, a bed and blankets. And uh, I know that there's, uh, there's medical. I know that I'm going to get free utilities and free rent. And, uh, you know, as long as I get along with people and I hold my own, I don't let any of these wise guys try to rape me or any, you hear these sick stories. You know, so guys say, screw it, man. I'm going to be a bank robber this. And you notice the cops don't lay less. I mean, especially if you're a bank robber that doesn't use a weapon. I mean, it's it's a joke. You couldn't hurt anybody. I met a cop once. I met several cops. They're nice people, everyone I've met. But this guy was from back east New Jersey, I think he said. He was guarding the bank outside of Bank of America downtown Chico here in Northern California where I am. And he was a very nice guy. And he started talking to him. I just walked up to him. I was joking with him. I said, I had been in the bank with this lady. I was couriering. I was chauffeuring to the bank. This lady I was working for as a landscaper, but she wanted me to do this for her on the side. So I was coming out of the bank and I was joking with the guy being a wise guy. And I walked up. I said, you know the best way to rob a bank? And he said, no, what? And I said, it's to own one. And he got a kick out of that. But um, it's fun. You know, you know, we ought to respect the cops if we want to be respected. They have a lot of discretion. So if, you know, I've gotten pulled over before and they let me go with no ticket. It goes to tell you, you can get off too. Hey, if you're drunk or something, yeah, you got a problem. But um, for the most part, uh, I have had good experiences. I got pulled over by the highway patrol once with one of my daughters in the car. I was coming out of Vegas on I-15 headed west. And... Uh, Big black CHP pulled me over, and the, what the hell? I mean, I had no idea what it was about, and uh, because I wasn't speeding even. I mean, you know, people are going five, ten miles an hour. It's just the flow of traffic. Hell, even my owner's manual in my 2000 Chevy Impala says, uh, which is the car I was driving then too, tells you to go with the flow of traffic. That's safest. And uh, but this cop walked over and he just, the first thing he did, I was getting out, I was getting ready, had my hands on the steering wheel, which you're supposed to do in plain sight. And, um, you know, I was ready thinking where my wallet is with my uh, driver's license and my insurance and proof of registration, all that crap. And the uh, first thing he said to me was, uh, I'm sorry, sir, it's a misidentification. Apparently somebody in a similar car, but, uh, you know, I guess I didn't fit the... Uh, facial profile. I did have a beard at the time, rather full beard. So I, at the time it was back in 2001 and the whole terrorist thing with 9-11. It might have been early 2002. But, um, you know, I thought I made a joke. I sent to Jay Leno at the time was uh, the host of uh, Tonight Show. And, uh, you know, it was this, this facial profiling instead of racial profiling. It was facial profiling because I had a beard. So I might have been a terrorist. But anyhow, friends, listen, that, uh, 
the cops can let you off and the mostly nice people. So be respectful. And we should all be respectful to each other. Give each other the benefit of the doubt. I mean, we might really think somebody's lying to us. Like, it's hard for me to believe anybody's an atheist. Well, it's hard for me to believe somebody it, it keeps touting and beating the drums for vaccine efficacy. And I'm thinking, well, maybe there is. But you know what? It's new technology in the last couple hundred years, man. And it comes from pus, and they still use live flu vaccine in the nasal formula. So, I mean, I, I, I don't inject me. Don't, I, what are you doing? I don't, you won't tell us what the ingredients are, and you've got immunity. The government has this super fund set up, the vaccine damage fund. Nobody's talking about it. It's all very twilight zone here. It's all very creepy that, you know, you say well, you've got to have balanced coverage, and yet the mainstream media is not balancing the coverage they're not getting dissenting opinions from experts out there that say maybe we shouldn't run headlong into this vaccine business and look into it a little bit. None of those voices are out there in the mainstream media. And they bitch and moan about Joe Rogan. How dare he? It's not balanced. He's just a fruitcake. He's a nut. He's killing people. Misinformation. Yeah, because we know for certain that people uh, are less likely to die with the vaccine. And because we're injecting them when they're healthy, but we know they're injecting people with COVID. People are getting COVID after being vaccinated. And, you know, you're going to come down on Joe Rogan. And I said, well, you know what? Maybe he's wrong for being an idiot back in the day and saying such stupid things about people. I mean, don't you know, have a little, little, uh, what's it called? Um, not even etiquette, but uh, decorum. You know, you don't, look, if there's any thought that a word is going to be offensive, because back in the day, friends, back in the 60s, I could even, it was, it was not about race, believe me. I mean, you, there might have been an illusion, subconscious, semi-conscious for a lot of people, but there's a lot of decent people that use that term that it did not mean it any way as a bespurchment of people of other color, because that's all we're talking about here. And that would be the most immature, stupid, childish thing for anybody to do is to be a freaking racist. I was not brought up a racist. My dad practically idolized Martin Luther King Jr. And so did I, independently, on our own. We came up with that deduction. This is a great human being. Who gives a crap what race he is? I no more care what the color of his skin is than I do that JFK was a Democrat. And people hear me slamming uh, Biden or Obama, they think, oh, he just hates Democrats. Hell no. I could give a crap less if Abraham Lincoln was a Democrat. Of course, he was a Republican. It matters not a whit. So, anyhow, friends, color doesn't matter. I mean, they used to call Brazil nuts that. They were entos. Okay, so you got to give people a break. If you need a break, I need a break. If you need slack, I need slack. Let's give Joe Rogan slack. He looks like he's genuinely upset that he hurt people's feelings. If, if people are sensitive to that, don't do it. How hard is it to not say certain words? I'm thinking about trying to get a partner for a podcast here locally. Going to my farmer's market and see if I can find somebody I can work with down there. And uh, I'm telling you straight up, none of the guests, anybody we vet that gets to call in, they're going to get vetted. They're gonna, you do not because we're we don't have a time lapse here and we're going to sue you if you use any words that offend anybody or are not approved by the who is it the federal communication the fcc for ch children here you notice that's what i do in my videos it's not hard to control your tongue to that degree if you're passionate you want to emphasize something you don't have to curse you don't have to be profane you don't have to be There's so many words I could use, but you don't have to do it. You don't have to use cuss words, right? We know that. I mean, just come on. Don't be an idiot. Think before you speak. So don't say words that offend people. And if people of that color that's associated with it want to use it in their rap songs, I used to object to that. It used to piss me off. Well, how dare they say I can't use that word when they're using it right and left? And I say, and I don't even listen to that kind of music. 
I really don't. There's something weird and wrong about some of that stuff. I mean, hip hop rap. I, I mean, I like it. Don't get me wrong, because I've enjoyed my share of rap and hip hop. I really have. And there's Christian rap and hip hop out there. And I enjoy the, 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 the theatrics of guys like Snoop Dogg. I, I do. I so I don't I'm not slam and their music genre at all. It's just that my thing. You know, I mean, my musical taste evolves, so maybe I'll enjoy it more. But there's something kind of weird and cultish about it. And uh, Kanye West, I mean, this poor guy, he's struggling, right? His big thing is hip-hop and rap, I guess. I don't know that much about it.